Welcome to new section. In this section, we are going to explore new functions in Pandas. So let's dive in. So uh, right now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, two libraries now. One of them is the NumPy and the Pandas. Uh, so why I'm using Panda now, uh, NumPy now? Because I need to generate a data first. And after that, we are going to take this data and we will play with the Pandas. And later on in our next sections, uh, whenever we are done with the covering the basics of the uh, pandas, we will get a real data. Whenever you have the real data, so you will not need a NumPy to generate a data because we already have a data and we will take the data and we will play with the pandas. But now, since we don't have a real data yet, we will come up with data, okay? So let me just go ahead, I will do a couple, uh, coding here actually uh, the first five minutes nothing new and you will be seeing what we did like i will be doing the same thing that we did last time let me close some windows on my second screen it makes a little bit noise so uh yes guys this is a little bit important and i will be uh keep repeating what we did so far because i just want to underline how important is that Okay, so uh, first, as a default, guys, if you are a data scientist, if you are a data analyst, by the way, guys, we are doing the most data analysis beside the data scientist. So believe it or not, get this habit. Whenever you start your first, uh, like in a scripting, just import libraries. So my first one, import NumPy as NP, and the second one, import Pandas as PD. Okay, perfect. So these is two libraries for now, of course. Later on, whenever we are done with the pandas, we will dive into the another libraries and we will import them too. But now it's okay. So number one is I need make my data. So I need some data that I will play in, in my pandas. So let me just generate it. So I will say from my NP, from, from the random library, I'm going to use in the rand and I will put a four by five. Actually, we already did it. You see, like one line of code and it makes a huge data for me. You see how it's easy, how it's fast. So let's just analyze. I have a two dimension array because I have a two, two brackets. And how can I understand that is a two dimension? So I need to see how many brackets I have. That means I have my X values and I have my Y values. So for here, I have my rows and I have my columns. So that's why we call it two dimensional. So how many rows I have a four, how many columns I have a five. So that's why I have a four by five here. That is perfect, that is amazing. And let me just save it to data, okay? So what I did it, I just generated my 2D array with the 20 different data and each data between zero and one. And I'm just saving that to the data. So later on, if I need my data, I will just call it. So let me just run it. Nothing pop it up, which is okay, because I didn't call my data yet. So right now, if I call it, I have all my data. Perfect. Now, I'm done with the NumPy now, for now, and I will take this data and using the pandas, I will just make it more nice view. You see, so right now from the pandas, which is PDA, I will say data frame. You see, so right now the, the data frame says, hey, I'm ready to make a frame for you. But can you please tell me which data do you want to use? Do you have a, like external source? Do you have a CSV file or what do you have? Just give me that. And I will tell it, hey, I already have my data, it's here. And I will just put my data inside. If I put inside, perfect. So what we did so far, I just took the same data and just visualize in a different way. So actually it helps us as a user to see it more clear, you see? So whenever you have this kind of data, it's a little bit kind of mess. Actually computer understands what uh, the computer is doing, but this is for us to see it more in a different way. Okay, that is perfect. So what I will say that uh, I want to save this data to something else. So let me just call it DF and DF stands for data, uh, data frame. If you want, you can call it ABC, it doesn't matter. So that, that is my data frame. Let me just run it. And later on, if I need my DF, if I need my data frame, I will just call it and it's here. Perfect. 
But do you remember that the panda says that, hey, you didn't tell me what is the row name and what is the column name. So as a default, I'm putting them one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So right now we are going to go ahead and rename it. I know we did it last time and you feel that, are we, are we repeating that? Uh, actually, no. Uh, so in the beginning, it looks like a repeating. So later on, I will be showing some new features. But this time, uh, I want to change these uh, names, like the names that is going to make sense. So what I'm going to do right now is, in the rows, I will give the, a student name. So I will say that is my student one, that is my student two, that is my student three, and that is my student four. And here I will say that is my math score, that is my like a science score, that is my art score. So we will just give the grades, which which is going to make much more sense. Okay. So here, do you remember that we did a data frame using my data? Uh, guys, I do hope I'm not missing your mind and you are keep hearing, uh, hearing that data, data, data. So that is a just data frame and that is the data that I made in my NumPy, okay? So right now I will tell it, hey, I want to rename it. So how many rows we have? One, two, three, four. So I will open one, two, three, oops. Four. And here, let me just give a name. I will say that is my Mike, that is my Oscar, that is my John, and that is my Alex. Okay, so let me see. Oops, what is wrong? So let's see. Oh, uh, let me just invalid syntax. Uh, let me look on my notes what I did incorrect. Let me see. Oh, instead of that, oh, yes. Instead of that, I need to put a comma here. Yes, if I put a comma, so right now, let me run my DF again. So what we did so far is I just save it all of them to my DF. And right now I'm calling my DF. Perfect. Now I have my mic, Oscar, John, and Alex. That is the number one. That is perfect. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename these one, two, three, fours. So right now I have a five different subjects and let's name them. So I will put a comma again. I just put a, uh, yes, a comma. And here I will put a five. One, two, three, four, oops, four, five. Now in the first one, let me just call it, this is the math. This is the science, this is the CS, which is stands for computer science. This is the art and that is, let me call it music. Okay, so let me just run it. I'm going to run that one first and after that I'm going to run that one. Perfect, so right now I have my data. So later on, if I call my DF again, so you see the DF is that my table, the data frame. If I call it, I see all my data frame here. Perfect. Now it looks like I see the decimals, but usually uh, when we have our grades, the grades are changing between zero all the way to the hundred. Uh, but I see we have some points here. So all numbers between zero and one. So basically what I can do is I will multiply everything by hundred. So I will say the DF times hundred, let me just run it. Perfect, it has 80, 72, 73, I have a 29, 25, that is amazing, perfect. And right now, you see, I just multiply, but if I call my DF again, I still see I see my uh, decimals here. Why it's so? Because I didn't save it. So let me show you what I'm going to do and I will explain what I did. So basically what I did, let me get my pen. I just took everything what is in my DF. I multiplied by 100 and I reassigned it to the DF again. So my DF is updated now. It's not, so if I call my DF later on, it will not show me like 0 0.5, 0 0.3s because it, it's already been updated. So my new DF is DF times 100. Perfect. So right now, if I call my DF one more time, oops, I didn't run it. So let me just save it to, and I'm going to run it. Perfect. So right now you see, I have my DF and all my grades looks like perfect. And one more step that I need to do, like usually whenever we have uh, our grades in the school, 
the teachers, they don't put the uh, points. Is it right? Like a 27.45. No, it's either 27 or it's a 28. So usually we don't put the decimal. So what I'm going to do is I will just delete those decimals or I'm going to round them. So I will say DF, you see, I'm reassigning my DF. I will say, hey, whatever the DF is, can you please round it for me? And the decimals is equal to zero. So let's see what I did so far. I, I'm just taking my data frame, whatever is data, I'm taking entire my table, round all of them and get a decimal as a zero. So do not get any value after that. Okay, and calculate all of them and reassign to the DF again. So I'm just running that. You see, it's already been saved. Now, if I call my DF, perfect. So right now I have my very clean data. So why I'm showing that one, do you remember guys, I was telling that if you are working in a data science, data science just as a team, some companies they have like a small companies, they have a team as a 2025, but some kind of companies, they have hundreds of people in a data science department. In that data science department, they have a sub department. So they have a small teams. And one of the teams, the duty of the one is the team just organize data, that's it. So they will get the data, they will organize all of them and they will send to another department. So you see, so uh, they call it, actually it's nice to call it. So they are cleaning dirty data. And we're gonna talk about just in a second, you see. So right now I see my clean data now. That is perfect because I don't need those decimals. So as soon as I'm done, I'm done with my job, I will just pass to my another department and I will get another data to, uh, to play with that. Okay, so we are done with our first uh, uh, task. So what is next? Do you remember that last, we, uh, last time on Monday, we were talking about how can I select a certain amount of data only? So right now I have a very extremely small data, but later on guys, you will see, you will be having huge data. So right now I have only four lines and you will be having some exercise that you are going to have a 4,000 lines. You will be having hundreds of columns because it's a lot. And uh, since if you understand how to work with the small data, it will be easy for you to make with a big one. So if I call my DF, I'm going to see all of them, but what if I want to see math only? So I will say, hey, hey, from the DF, can you bring math only for me? Oops, math only for me. Uh, guys, I'm not sure if you see my screen, I'm doing very big, but if you want, I can make it smaller. So whatever works for you. Do you think that size is good for you? Because uh, I see some, it, it was not sent to me. It was sent to another teacher saying that, hey, I'm using the Chromebook and the Chromebook has showing very small icons. I cannot see them. Can you zoom in? So yes, guys, I'm trying to zoom in and zoom out. But I think, guys, I do hope you understand and you are catching me what I'm doing right now. So right now I'm saying, hey, from the DF, can you pull out only math? Okay, so let me just pull out. Perfect. I have a Mike, he got an 81. I have an Oscar, he got a 72. So that is only one column. What if I need a several columns? So from the DF, I will say, let me put the one more brackets. Do not forget, guys, if you are pulling one only, so you need to have, oops, you need to have only one bracket. If you have a two and more, five, six, seven, whatever you want. If you have a several columns to select, guys, you need to provide two brackets, okay? So here I will tell that, uh, can you bring the scores, oops, the math scores and also art scores? So right now, perfect. I have on my mic, which is 81, 60 and so on and so on and so on. So we already learned that. Let me pull out the app again. Now the big game is about to start. Actually, the new topic that uh, it was planning for today, we will start now. So right now we are going to work with the conditions. Uh oh, you will say what conditions? Do you remember we did the conditions in the first term when we were learning like a while for loop and especially if loop. So if this case is true, 
do something. If it's, uh, it's not true, do not do it. So we are going to use the same, uh, the same issue here. But the panda says that, hey, don't worry about if statements. Don't try to pull out like in different for loops or something, something. I already did something for you. I already did some functions. It, it, it's much more easy to use it. So right now the pandas, it helps a lot, guys. You, do you remember I was telling that the pandas is keep updating its most powerful tool. So instead of typing like the 10 lines of codes, you can just put one line of codes and it is doing the same way if you just type 10 lines of codes. By the way, by saying that, let me just explain you something. I will not give the name, but please, please, please don't take it personally. Uh, in some of your homework uh, assignments, guys, whenever I go one by one, whenever I read, uh, some of your assignments are just copied and passed from the sources, which makes me happy sometimes. Don't get it wrong, guys. Nobody is perfect. Even if, if you go outside in the market, in a company, even the senior engineers, they're always looking on internet for the different resources. And using those open sources is absolutely fine. The only thing you need to know which code to use. Because recently, like the last time when I was giving the pandas and NumPy, I see a couple uh, submissions saying that, hey, I use it my if loop, like an if statement, for loop, and so on and so on. Actually, you don't need to do that. And for sure, I can see that it was copied from internet, which is absolutely okay. But the only thing, guys, I want you to learn the pandas. This is our goal. Uh, try, to yourself, try to do it by yourself and make your own codes. But later on, whenever we are going to have our projects, guys, I will ask you to go ahead and research and use those uh, skills. I mean, getting codes from the open source, absolutely fine. Don't misunderstand, guys. So in other subjects like the English or art, uh, they call it plagiarism. But here in, in, in the computer science, it's not. So everybody's copying from each other. But of course, do not use exactly the same one. Actually, it's impossible because that code has a different understanding and your code, you will just take this code, make some modifications and you are good to go, okay? So that is was kind of extra note for today. So we were talking about the condition. So right now, what I'm going to do is I will just pull out or I just want to see who got more than 50. So whose grade is more than 50? So basically in the Python, what we need to do, we need to use the if statement. Is that right? If math score is a 50, like dot, dot, do blah, 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 blah. You see, it, it takes a time. But right now the panda says that, hey, just give me data frame and tell me what you want. That easy. If DF bigger than 50, just print it for me. You see how easy is that, guys? That is that is extremely easy. Perfect. So right now it says, let's see who got more than 50. Mike, yes, he got more than 50. Oscar, so everybody in Matt got uh, more than 50. But in science, Mike, no, he didn't get. He's failing this class. Oscar, he's failing this class. You see? So using only like a very simple code and we know what we are doing. But uh, I want to see who is failing. So let's imagine I see the mic, he's failing. Is he failing because of he has a 49? Or is he about like, a, it's a 10 grade. So I want to see the grades. But uh, if that is a math, if he's past it, I don't care about that one. Just I, I care about who is failing and why they are failing. So I want to see the, uh, the real value of that. But before coming to here, let me just remind one more thing. Do you remember that we had a DF that pulled out everything? But if I want to get a specific data from here, I will say DF, I will open the brackets and I will write my condition. So for example, I will say the math. So that is the format. You see, that is the format. So from the DF, pull out only math. But now instead of math, what I will tell you, tell that, hey, whatever is bigger than uh, less than 50. Now it will be a little bit confusing maybe, but I do hope guys you understand about it. So right now I'm telling from my data frame, pull out something. So whenever you see the brackets, so we have a condition, okay? And what is a condition? 
only those which is less than 50, DF50. Okay, so let me see how it looks like. So if I run it and bye bye. Perfect. Now I can see only those values which is less than 50. You see? So uh, it's not applicable or it's not a number. So I don't care about these numbers. I see only those numbers, which is less than 50. So I can do my like actions uh, and do something for that one. So that is amazing, perfect. Or what I wanna see who is more than 50. You see, so I wanna pull out those students who are more than 50. So there's 81, 72, 73. So this guy is failing, this guy is failing, and so on and so on. So that gives me some ideas. Perfect. So let me just go ahead. Uh, will be uh... okay. Perfect. So right now, what I want to do is I want to pull out the students in the science who are more than uh, more than 50. But right now I have very small data. Do you see that? It's very small data. But imagine that you have a huge data. Like always, whenever, whenever you learn pandas or NumPy, just imagine that so right now I have a four by six. In your mind, always think about like I have a 4,000 by 6,000 data, which is okay. So somehow I need to sort it, sort it, sort it, sort it, and get those data that is valuable for me and just pass to another department. So my department says that, hey, can you clean data, please? And can you just pull out those names who are like more in the science class, they are more than 50. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say, I will say DF and I'll open the brackets. So that is a default, do not forget. So if you want to sort something, so you will write your data, like whatever your source is, and you write the condition. So I will say from my DF, signs which is more than 50. Did you get what I'm doing right now? So from an entire data set, I want to sort something. And what is our uh, sorting? So uh, the, the, uh, the signs which is more than 50. So let me just run it. Perfect. Only John got more than 50 in the science class. Does it make sense, guys? You see, so right now I just minimize it. I just clean it my data because uh, I don't need everything or my next department, they don't need it. They just need those that information that is here. And let me just run one more. What I'm going to do is let me just go DF again. I will just pull out my data. So let me see, I will say, I will, I want to pull out the names of the students who are successful in the math and the music. So that means if their grade is uh, more than 50 in math and in the music. Mm, okay. Again, whenever it comes to the point of sorting, guys, so you will say DF and the breakers. So just make this habit. That comes as a default. Now, do you remember that we had only one condition here? That is a one condition. We are just sorting by signs. But right now we have a two conditions. So they need to be successful in math and also they need to be successful in music. Mm, okay, so how can I do that? Let me just make a zoom in. I will just make it some space inside. Oops, let me just delete that. So right now, what I will say that I will open one bracket and I will say, and, and I will open the, another parenthesis. Oh, yes, that is a parenthesis, it's not a bracket. So let me just explain what I'm doing. So from my data frame, from my entire data, I have a condition. So that is a condition. So, but right now I have a two conditions or more conditions, but for instance, I have a two conditions. So I need to use the parentheses here. So that is my first condition and second condition. Sometimes time to time, it happens to me too, guys. Don't worry it ha if it happens to you. If you are confused, do I need to put the two brackets here and the two brackets inside as well? Or do I need to make a bracket and the parenthesis here? So there is no explanation, guys. You will just get used to it. If you use this time, uh, type of coding, guys, you probably you will get error. And in error, it will say that, hey, go ahead and change the brackets. 
okay? You can just go ahead and change the brackets. It happens to me all the time, guys. I keep forgetting, do I need to use the brackets or do I need to use the parentheses or do I need to use the dictionaries like that one, you see? This is absolutely fine, guys, if you're messing up because you're just learning, which is okay. So, and also another thing is guys, uh, I don't know why the Python gives the error, but they just come up with that one. So you need to use that symbol. So if you type and that is another syntax, which is okay, but it will give the error in the pandas, okay? So the pandas does not accept and A and D. So the, the, the pandas ask that, hey, you need to use that symbol, okay? So let me see. So what is my first case? So I want to sort the people who are successful in math. So that is my first condition. So inside, I will say DF, DF math, which is bigger than 50. That is the first condition. And you see, I end from my DF, which is, music also bigger than 50. Guys, I do hope you are catching me and you understand what I'm doing right now. So let me run it. I will cross my fingers. Bam, bam. It's perfect. So right now we have only three students who are successful in math and also in the music. You see? But if you want, you can say, or if the student uh, either successful in math or in, in the music, so instead of, you see? So if you want, you can type and, but and is not working. I tried, it didn't work. So we need to use that and, but instead of or, you see, or is a syntax. The Python accepts that, but the panda says that, I don't know what the or is. And instead of or, you just need to use that. I don't know what's the name of that symbol. So you need to use that straight line like that one. So Absolutely. that is. Yeah, absolute value. So if I put that one, you see, so that mic is either uh, greater than a fifth or that one. So both of them. So let me just pull one of them. So John, he's either bigger than a uh, mat 50 or so, uh, but I will be using that as the, that symbol. Yes, guys, that is all for today.